evening, afternoon, morning. Hope you all had a nice day. Oh dear. Nearly the weekend for you the, for those that are at work. And for the mums out there. I know how you feel. Anyway, tonight we're looking at updates on Elijah Vu, who is three years old and has gone missing. And Sebastian Rogers was 15 years old, missing and is autistic. So there's an added complication there. So I don't know what you all feel about this, so we're going to talk about Elijah first. Right, now we've had an update. As usual, I'm always like getting it. I'm always like getting the updates because I normally come through when I'm in bed or something like that. So we've had an update. From the police, two rivers police. I must admit, I was a bit late coming on today. Didn't come on till or sometime this afternoon because I was I was doing other things. So right, let's just make sure it's streaming. Yes. This was twenty hours ago. Twenty hours ago. Elijah Booth. Two Rivers Police Department. Elijah has not been located. Today we expanded our urban and rural, rural neighbourhood campus and continued searches of our waterways and shoreline. Canines were also out checking and rechecking various areas. Please continue to call our tip line at Right. I can't just Please continue to call our decline at eight four four two six seven six six four eight or submit information via our Crime Stoppers P3 app with any information that you think could be helpful. Call us with information leading to the loca location of Elijah Boo or arrest a person involved or he or his mindful for his discipline could become eligible to receive a reward of up to a thousand one thousand dollars from Manitoba County Crime Stoppers. At last night's press conference, we also announced the FBI is also, also offering a reward of up to one fifteen thousand for information leading to location. So is that now it's 16,000 altogether. Yeah, I should think so. And return of Elijah Boo and all the rest of and conviction of the individuals involved in this his disappearance. And that makes me wonder are they looking at more than just the mother and the boyfriend? Are they, do they believe there's others involved? Or have they just worded it like that, like involved, person or person involved? You know what I mean? So I think other people, someone must have noticed something. At last night, hang on, we have seen an increase, increase in tips and information and continue to follow up on all leads. Locating Elijah continues to be our top priority. Ben Reinhardt, Chief of Police. Right. So, I'll 
I'll go on to, oh no, I've just closed those two windows now because we don't need them now. Um, and I, I'll go on to the YouTube to get some new channels, okay? New channels that I've done. And the one, one so far I can find is. Was two hours ago. Yeah. So I'll keep looking. Some Fox Eleven news. Now they've always on top of news. All right. So. Oh, okay. What? Oh, yeah. <coughs> Fox 11 News at 5. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight at 5. The goal of bringing three-year-old Elijah Vu back home safely continues now into its second week of yeah. searching. Yeah, the little boy's family sending volunteers, searchers out again as local, state, and federal authorities continue to work the case. Fox 11's Emily Matesic has spent the day in Manitowoc County. She joins us live from Two Rivers this evening. And Emily, did you talk to any searchers today? Yeah, Mark and Michelle, we didn't speak. Um, well, with any searchers directly today, they were out. Uh, the law enforcement investigating this, as well as the Vu family, choosing not to speak today, instead spending all of their efforts on finding that little boy. From the quick trip in Two Rivers to businesses in Manitowoc, it's hard to go anywhere in Manitowoc County and not see a lot of Vu's face on a missing person poster. His family, after Tuesday night's news conference, deciding not to take a day off from organizing search parties, continuing to dispatch volunteers from the Mikado Theater in Manitowoc. If you have any information, please come forward. We believe that with the help of the community, we can bring Elijah back home together. Volunteers once again tackling several areas in Manitowoc County, searching for Elijah Vu. Meanwhile, we found law enforcement from Fond du Lac and Trempolo counties working out of the Shoto Town Hall as part of the investigation. As we've reported, the Two Rivers Police Department, the agency leading the investigation, is being assisted by local, state, and federal agencies, along with private businesses and organizations. We reached out to hundreds and hundreds of resources over this week's time span, and they're all dedicated to bringing him home and will continue to follow up on any leads to do so. Law enforcement still asking for the public's help to put together a timeline of when Elijah Vu was last seen. When was the last time someone other than Jesse Bang saw Elijah? I appreciate that question. What I will say is uh, the reason that we've been seeking out to the public to request all the information that we are is because we are following up on every lead, tip, etc. And that is one of those things. You know, we want to know every time, any time that Elijah was seen during this past week. So we will continue to follow up on all leads, any leads, and that's what's leading us into the locations that we've been. And I did hear back from the FBI today telling me that they are very much still involved in this investigation, asking me to remind people about that $15,000 reward that they're offering, offering for information about Elijah Vu's whereabouts or about the arrest or prosecution of those responsible for his disappearance. Live in Two Rivers, Emily Matesic, Fox 11 News. All right, thank you, Emily. Elijah was reported, as uh, we said, last seen as an ad by, last seen by an adult caregiver at eight o'clock in the morning of February 20th. He was in the 3900 block of Michicot Road. Elijah has dark blonde hair, brown eyes. You see the picture right there. He weighs about 45 pounds, is three feet tall, and does have a birthmark on his left knee. Police continue to remind the public that uh, no tip or bit of information is too small. Anyone who may have seen Elijah or know where he is is urged to call the number on your screen. That number is 844-267-6648.
Right. So, that's that so far. Right. Hold on, I'll just talk. Talk now. Okay. I'd like to uh, welcome everybody. When was this one? This was a day ago. Right. So, we're not going to watch that. That was a day ago. Probably what still they want us to do. Um, so I'm not finding any more. Looking. Uh, oh God. Sorry. I don't know why I did that. We'll go back into YouTube again. <laughs> um, there's nothing much more apart from if anyone sees, knows anything, saw something. They want to know everything they want to know when he was seen where he was seen because to be honest i don't think he it happened on the 20th i think she was down there on the 16th and stopped to the 17th left saturday morning on the 17th early i think something happened on the 16th now, if that's the case, could she have had the bad the boy in her car and got rid of him somewhere along the route home? As we talked about, we sh I showed you the two sort of routes she could take from hers to his and his to hers. It's about two and a half hours. But I don't know. Is she going along with what he said because she's scared? Possibly. I think they need to put a bit of pressure on her. They need to start putting pressure on her. Because I would say first to talk, first to walk, sort of thing. Because she definitely knows more. But I think she's too scared to talk. She's too scared. As she said, he's the enforcer of the rules. Is he the enforcer of the rules with her? And then I heard as well, like people say, neighbor said that she's very harsh with her two children, grabbing them by their arms and all this, like shouting and screaming at them. So. I really don't know, but there's nothing else. As you can see, as I'm going through it, I'm not seeing nothing else for Elijah. This is, let's have a look at this. Oh no, this is another YouTube. I'm not looking at that because oh no, can't She's good, but. I don't want to be straight. I don't mind doing the news channels. But when you start going into other people's YouTube channels and sharing them, you have to you have to acknowledge them and all that. And I, I ain't got the time for that tonight. It takes too long. Right, that was seven days ago, that one was. That was the kind of like visual they had, or whatever it was they had. So, um, let's just type it in, see what we come up with. Oh, I don't need to do it till we get there. Let's see if there's anything else. There's got to be something else. No. Oh, I've watched that, the Nancy one. Yesterday, that's not. And there's one girl on there, and Nancy, bless her, 
she's she's good friends with all her people she has on her show and this one guy was really triggering her like sort of like she's getting a back up Barry. right we've got this one here it's only a minute and 56. but we can watch this one The entire Lakeshore community has been hurting since Elijah Vu went missing on February 20th. I'm your Lakeshore neighborhood reporter, Preston Stober, and today I'm talking with the group that's hurting the most. It's Elijah Vu's family as I join them on a search. The Vu family is very close. When we come together and, you know, um, put a plan in place, we, we go through with it. Elijah's uncle, Orson Vu, says the family is strong, but hurting. It, it breaks my heart when I think about it. Since Elijah disappeared last Tuesday, the family has been on foot, coming through parks and forests all over Manitowoc County. I was the only reporter asked to join them on their latest search. It, it does give us a little peace of mind in that sense that we are putting uh, a lot of effort into finding Elijah. On Tuesday, Two Rivers Police held a press conference. Elijah's grandma, Leah Vang, asked the community not to give up. I want my grandson to be home, bring my family. So I want everybody to continue, don't stop, just searching for my baby Elijah. Vang is a mother of nine and a grandmother of 26, including Elijah and two of Orson's kids. That's, that's, you know, that's the ultimate plan is just, you know, having them meet, having them get to know each other, run around and play. A large family, all united by one goal, finding Elijah. It hurts, um, and it's hard. You know, it's hard to 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 face sometimes. Where you know, it's just he's not here, and I don't know where he is. The Vu family will continue to search, based here at the Mikado Theater in Manitowoc, where they will meet every morning at 9 a.m. for at least the remainder of the week. In Manitowoc, Preston Stover, NBC 26. I've got an order coming in a minute, so I'll have to just sneak up to her and answer the door. Um, have you seen that? I think over a day ago, like from yesterday onwards, a backwards, we've seen. So it's very hard. So... I don't know what your feelings are towards this, you know what I mean? I, I think something has happened, and I don't think it happened on the Tuesday or whenever it was reported missing. I think it happened before. And I've had time to clean the house up, get rid of any, like, like a red one come up saying, Perhaps if he fell asleep after taking medication, how does he know perhaps a little boy could have got hold of that medication? You know what I mean? An OD. But we don't know because no one is talking. Hold on. Be right back.
Right, um, I'm back. I don't know what your views are. I'd like to know what your views are. Um, it definitely didn't just wander off. That is a definite no no. He definitely didn't just want to off. So. So what happened, we don't know when it happened. But like the ones who know, like all the sightings, so that they can actually pinpoint to a time when he was last seen. Right? And then they can say, well, between that time and now, something happened. Uh, and when you reported him missing, something happened. What happened? Right? And perhaps if they've got a, a small, if they got a, if they know a time scale, say something happened on the 16th or the 17th, right? Uh, they'd be able to track where he went by his phone and where she went by her phone. And, but the thing is, the day he went missing, now I only found this out yesterday, was, um, the day when they come and take all the rubbish away. So, And that's why those check they are checking the landfill. Because the day he, he was caught missing was the day the the refuse came. So if you put if they did do something did happen to Elijah, which I believe they did, something has happened to him. There's no way he's out in those woods not after over a week. You know what I mean? It's like a week and a half now. This little boy's been missing. So there's no way he just wandered off. No way. There's no sign of him on any cameras, doing any doorbells, nothing. So, but, hold on. Ooh, I'm going to play this in case anyone watching it watches it later. Now breaking news, the FBI is now offering a reward up to $15,000 in the search for a missing boy in Manitowoc County. The three-year-old Elijah Vu was reported seeing one week ago today. His disappearance sparked it. 12 News Kendall Keyes is live in Two Rivers tonight, and Kendall Police and the FBI just gave an update. And Joyce, police emphasize their extensive search efforts here locally in Two Rivers and also say tips expanded their search to the Wisconsin Dells where Elijah's mother lives, but still no sign of the three-year-old. Right now, the boy's mother, Katrina Bauer, and her boyfriend, Jesse Vang, are in custody. We know from a criminal complaint, Elijah had been staying with Vang at his residence in Two Rivers. Vang told police he last saw Elijah at the apartment at 8 last Tuesday morning. Do police believe Elijah left that residence on his own? Again, I can't speculate. I will say that, again, when we're talking about the Amber Alert that we put out, people wanted me to speculate on an abduction versus endangered. At this point, what I do know is a child was missing in cold temperatures, you know, winter temperatures, in relatively little clothing and possibly a blanket. That's what we're searching for. And we'll continue to search for until I get some answer. To anyone who, who may have information about Elijah's whereabouts, we plead with you to please come forward. Your courage, your compassion, your willingness to speak up may hold the key to Elijah's safe return. And Kendall, we also learned today the FBI pitched in with a reward. Joyce, that $15,000 reward from the FBI comes after the Manitowoc County Crime Stoppers offered $1,000 over the weekend. Now, that reward money is for any 
information that leads to Elijah or the arrest of anyone who might be involved in his disappearance. I asked the police chief tonight if he believes there might be anyone else involved. He didn't answer that question tonight. Joyce. Kendall Keyes reporting live tonight in Two Rivers. So, like I said, they're still muted. No, not. The police are holding this. Very, any information they're getting, they're holding it very close to their chest and not giving out. And I can understand, but as I keep saying, this is when people start speculating and making up their own plans, ideas, you know what I mean? So it was nice that they come out and done a live, a live press conference on Tuesday. That was the week. Will they do another one next Tuesday? If he's not found, and I said the other day, if that little boy was put in that river, I'm sure he would have been found by now. Unless he's being held down by a boulder, told to a bowl a boulder in a deeper part of the river. Do you, do you understand where I'm coming from? Because he would have floated up by now and gone down, started floating down the river. And as I went through that river on Google Maps, it shows you a lot of like sandbanks and marshy lands, right? Where a body could get caught up in. Now, I'm sure, I don't know if they've done the whole river. I should hope they have. I hope they have done the whole river. But I don't, it's, I just don't want this case to be another summer moon new tile wells where they don't know where the body is and Harmony Montgomery. There's another one. The father just got sent down. for the uh, second degree murder and second degree assault or something like that. So he's got his sentencing coming up sometime in May, April, May. But he's going down for a long time. He's already doing like 70 years already. So he's not going to see the light of day. But I just don't want it where we don't know where the body is. I don't want that. It's not fair. Because every child, if not in if they can't have a full life, they should be entitled to a, a proper burial. Somewhere where the parents, the family can go, leave toys, cook the toys for him, sit and talk to him. Do you know where I'm coming from? So it's hard to. I just don't understand why the road say. Well, I do because I know if they say, "Oh, well, we've done this and we're doing this," they know they're going to get a, a very long sentence, and that's why they won't talk. They need someone who isn't scared of them. To stand up for that little boy and come forward because it's not right, it's not right. And every day, I do check every day on YouTube and on Two Rivers Police Department. I'll check every day when I go up to see if there's any more updates, anything, but the reason. Apart from that one today, which was like 20 hours ago, which was last night when I was probably in bed. You know what I mean? So, um, it's just heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. This is happening. So, right. As I said, there's no more updates. I will keep an eye on that. But now we're going to go and talk about 
Sébastien. Voilà, bon petit Sébastien. Right, what we'll do, we'll go and look at this one first. See what they have to say. And that breaking news this afternoon, the search for a missing 15-year-old boy in Sumner County is now an Amber Alert. Hi, everyone. A lot to get to here at 4 o'clock. I'm Hunter Hoagland. Sebastian Rogers left his house sometimes Sunday night or Monday morning and has not been seen or heard from since. He has autism, which makes finding him even more important. Hannah McDonald has been on the ground covering the story for us today in Hendersonville. Hannah, do we know why this has now been upgraded to an Amber Alert? I just got clarification on that, Hunter. In this case, the reason it is an Amber Alert now is because so much time has passed. There's bad weather coming in, and this young man has not had his medication in about 36 hours or more, and he needs it. There are more than 200 searchers currently looking for Sebastian Rogers. And I'll be honest, it's a bit tense. It feels like everyone here has their head on a swivel. Behind me, the Shackle Island Fire Hall is the home base for the search crews. There's a lot of unique ground to cover in this area. This neighborhood quickly goes from suburban to rural. So Sumner County Emergency Management Director Ken Widener told me that in order to keep everyone on the same page, they only want professional searching right now. However, it is so hard to stop people in this community from jumping into action when a child's life is potentially in danger. Well, you can look right there and see, you know, little kid, he likes to get in buildings, they said. So he could be in that barn somewhere, you know. I've seen people, if he's scared, he's going to wait and come out when nobody's around, probably. That's the reason I'm trying to ride the road to see if maybe there's a chance he'd come out and I've seen him, you know. So here's what we know about the missing 15 year old. At this point, we know he wandered away from Stafford Court. He is five foot five inches and 120 pounds. He was last seen wearing his glasses, a black sweatshirt and black sweatpants. He has autism, which could mean he's drawn to water and closed spaces or places of special interest to him. How you can help law enforcement is by looking in any of your garages, sheds, barns, unused buildings, buildings and, checking. and checking for him. There's a case, there is um, the, the possibility that he is hiding in one of those buildings. In Hedder right, yeah, I've just pulled up the maps. And I'll show you the maps now, okay? Before we listen to any more. It has been nearly 48 hours here yeah. since Sebastian Rogers disappeared. Google Maps. This is... This is what... Uh, they are looking at. He went missing... From somewhere around here, where was it now? Here, um, from Stafford Court. Is that where he lives? I don't know. But that's where he was last seen. Right? So, that's where he was last seen. If, did he go up to the end of the road and cut through someone's garden and go over this way? Right? Or... Did he go down as straight across into the woods here? It is said that he loved to go into the woods. Perhaps he found it calming. I'm sorry. Perhaps he found it nice and relaxing and calm before he 
because normally people with autism they don't like change now as far as we know nothing has changed in his life nothing at school nothing at home but he's more active on the night time as parents think. so I should imagine they've checked all his devices if he because he's left his mobile phone as well. So I can't just go and write a lad like that, a 15 year old leaving your mo mobile phone. Hmm. So, so But someone, I'm sure I heard someone say his, tab, his laptop or tablet was missing. Now, was he talking to someone on a site somewhere and they've arranged to meet up? Do you know what I mean? But this, this is the area they are looking at. Uh, uh, where's that train station? Uh, the, see what I mean? You got all these houses in, and you got these few houses and whatever around it. They're not full of houses. They're not like jam packed building to build to building. They've got some space around each house. So, but then you go from that, right? Okay, you've got a bit of a build up here, but still very, what's this here? Is that a quarry? Drake's Creek Road, is it a quarry or something? Or is it where they're building new houses? Looks like they're building more houses around there, doesn't it? Yeah, because look how the roads go like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's more houses are being built around there. So it's This is all new. Well, I say this is all new. This is where ever this was took. By now, that could be full of houses. But it's true what they say, children or adults with autism are drawn to water. And they say that about Alzheimer's as well. Out the old people with Alzheimer's, they are drawn to water. And I did point out something somewhere. Where was he? I seen it. It wasn't far from where he lived. It was walking, well, I'd say walking distance for a 15 year old. But I'm sure I seen some water somewhere. You know what I mean? But as I said, it's a big area they are covering. But they have got a lot, a lot of search teams and people on the ground. That's why they're asking, they're asking the people in the town to not do their own search parties. If they need them, they will call on them. All right? Which is fair enough. And I, but I can also see where people will get frustrated. Have they looked here? They haven't looked here. You know what I mean? But you don't know if they've got that in plan to go there. Now, I'm sure the other day when I was doing this, I was seeing a river, a pond, or whatever. All right, let's pull out a bit more. You know, I've seen it around here somewhere. Perhaps my eyes were playing up. I'm 
I mean, perhaps my eyes have just been playing up. It's just to my lives. But it's not easy. And the terrain is very up and down, hilly, flat. You can see how the terrain is by the darkness and lightness and things. You know what I mean? They look very hilly. Some is flat, some is hilly. So it's a mystery as to where he is and why he went up like he did. Oh, God. Hold on. Oh, God. This has got to come back out. Hmm. Oh God! Wow. It's all right, my. It's just doing my head in this, trying to get this all in one. Right. Wow. Right. Let's have a look. Two days ago, I was seeing that one. Seen that one. Seeing as she did do a live on Elijah Vim, but well, I read every recording on Elijah Vim. Um, that's six hours again. When was this one? Okay. Right, let's have a look at this one. It's only three minutes long. Sebastian Rogers in Sumner County. The autistic team went missing three days ago near Beach Heights. Sorry, my internet is playing up again, I think. It's not showing it's playing up. I don't know what's going on. school in Hendersonville. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Carrie Sharp. I'm Rory Johnston. Authorities upgraded the case from an endangered child alert to an Amber Alert just yesterday. They did so for a couple of reasons, including the harsh drop in temperatures and the fact that Sebastian needs his medicine. Aaron Cantrell joins us now from Northfield Church in Gallatin, where a vigil is getting underway. Aaron, it's like this young man just vanished. Yeah, Carrie Marie, that's what it feels like, you know, because we are on day three and crews, they have been out all day searching the area, but community members, they felt the need to do something. So they're hosting this prayer vigil, coming together, hoping and praying that he does yeah. come home safely. Now, they, a lot of people want to get out in the community to help search, but uh, first responders say, just leave that to them. But this is the best way they can help by praying and also just hoping he does return home. Now, the 15 year old, they are asking you all to be on the lookout for him. And they say if you do happen to see him, just remain calm. My big concerns is the weather, the, the rain from this morning, the drop in temperature, the wind, and then tonight we're going to be cold. Day three of the search for Sebastian Rogers continues. The autistic teen was last seen near Stafford Court in Hendersonville, wearing a black sweatshirt, black sweatpants, and glasses. Hundreds of trade professionals from departments across Middle Tennessee have been conducting searches with the assistance of horses, dogs, and specialized technology like drones. They've expanded their search efforts and have been paying very close attention to bodies of water. Many, many people on the spectrum love water. Um, whether they swim or not, they just the, the calming nature of water tends to be somewhere, a place that attracts them. Ponds, lakes, swimming pools. Um, obviously, we're in Hendersonville, so we've got a lot of water around us. Sebastian also takes medication. So Jessica Moore, the executive director of Autism Tennessee, says it's important to find him quickly. Someone who is used to routine, who has a daily schedule, who has 
um, just different aspects of their lives that's just repetitive every day. Um, it, it can be very stressful to not have those pieces in place. Authorities have asked neighbors to check their property, including crawl spaces, sheds, <laughs> small areas he could be hiding at. More thinks Sebastian could be a sensory seeker. Someone who enjoys a lot of pressure, deep pressure. Um, I think he likes to hide in that those conf more confined spaces um, are calming. And if you see him, remain calm. Approaching slowly um, with calm words, with a calm demeanor. Um, I'm sure that he, he he's feeling a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. At least I would be in that situation. She's hopeful they will find Sebastian. Now, this is personal for more because she's also a mother and has kids herself, but she also lives here in this Hendersonville community. So she is hoping for the best. Now, this prayer vigil is getting underway now. Now, authorities say the best way that you can help during this is attend events like this, but also. Right, be right back. I'm going. Be right back. Sorry, just had to go and sort my cap out. Right, so, where was we? He's coming to the end of that, wasn't we? But we'll just finish it anyway. So keep sharing the poster of Sebastian and hopefully he is coming home safely. I'll send it back to you all. Oh, I hope so, Aaron, thank you. Right, so. First at five, the desperate search for a missing Sumner County teenager has reached the critical point. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marius. Get up, my cat. No. No. Um. So there's nothing much to. On this either, because then. They haven't got much information themselves because they don't understand why he would get up, leave his home. And that, like that woman said, children with autism, when you've got a routine, they like routine. They love, they like routine. Like say you get up in the morning and their routine is get up at a certain time, right? Go and have a wash get dressed, then breakfast, right? So that's their routine. If you say, get them up at, say, 8 a.m., then, oh, no, we'll have your breakfast first, then we'll get washed and dressed. No, no. You can't do that. You have to stick to that routine. You have to get up at that same, like, within that time. Well, I wouldn't say getting up at the same time is the a thing. But keeping to that routine when the child is up, get them washed, get them dressed, get them fed. Or if you feed them first, then wash, then dress, then fine. But they don't like change. So it's like my grandson now, he's six. He knows every weekend he'll either come to my house 
or to everyone. He knows that. He likes that. That's his routine. He's been that routine since he's been a baby. Right? And when he can't, like, say I'm down, I try to arrange it to go down to my daughter's so that if I'm going down for the weekend, I'm down there a weekend when I don't have my Ellis. Right? I make it so that I'll go down on a weekend when I'm when Ellis is at his Evergrande's. But otherwise, they don't like change. They find it very upsetting. They get angry. And that's when they tend, pardon me, they tend to have what they call meltdowns. It's not bad behaviour, it's confusing in their head. They don't understand why they're not doing this now. Or why are you doing it this way or not that way. They don't understand that you can do anything any way you want to go. But no, you have to do it this way. If you know what I mean? It's a routine, you have to do it a certain way and stick to that routine. And that's why it's hard for parents with some of autism, right? Because on holidays, when the school holidays come, they're so used to getting up and going to school that when they get up and they haven't got to go to school, so, but that's my routine. My routine is I get up, I get washed, get dressed, have breakfast, go to school. And then all of a sudden, Boom, that is stopped. That's why I seriously believe that children, any schools where they've got children with special needs, right, they should at least let have it so they come in one or two mornings a week, right, so that the routine is changed but not totally changed. So that they understand then, then that during holidays, when you say to them, oh, it's holiday time, they will know then, okay, my routine is this now. But when they're not going into school at all, it's so stressful. So stressful for parents. And so I can't understand what would make him get up and leave his home. I really don't. I don't know that. Just, to me, it doesn't make sense. I know he's 15 years old, but it doesn't make sense. So, look at this area. That's where we lived. You know, this is where it ran here. Right? And once again, they've got all this to search on foot, by head, by drone, by horse, right? Horse is great because you can get a fair distance on a horse. And because you're a player as well, you can see some things over bushes and whatever, but I can't understand why, why he has not been found now. You know what I mean? Why he hasn't been found yet? Doesn't matter. I don't understand. There's a 15 year old lad. Where's he getting food from? Where's he eating? Where's he drinking? Where's he getting the fluids? Because if he's not being to seeing in this in the city in the towns anywhere, where's he getting his food? So. Has he arranged to meet up with someone and go off with them? And that's why he left his phone at home so they couldn't track him. Because he's autistic, but believe me, they're very clever. Clever. And that's why I always say it. the government in every country let these children down so much. 
and really they should look at them and say these children have got so so much potential they're not different they just see things differently from everyone else so just because they don't do it your way it doesn't make them bad they just throw it their way and sometimes their way makes a lot more sense Uh, but let's have a look again to see if we can find anything. No, still. There you go. Uh, one day, five days. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, just trying to see if there's anything else. Oh, have you seen this? See this one? Just seeing if you've seen this one or not. First, before I share it again. <coughs> raising the pressure to find the 15 year old who disappeared three days ago fox 17 news caitlin miller back on the story for us live in the shackle island community where people are turning to prayer to bring sebastian home caitlin what's the latest yes well as you can see behind me multiple agencies are working tirelessly to bring sebastian rogers home but the support goes beyond this several people from the community gathered here tonight for a prayer vigil now tonight, the community hosted this vigil at the church called Northfield Church in Gallatin to come together as a community to pray that Sebastian can return home safely. Now we spoke with the director of Sumner County Emergency Management, Ken Weiner, and he says today they've expanded their search even more. Weiner says they're concerned about the heavy rainfall earlier, dropping temperatures, and the potential for hypothermia. So he's, it's critical to find him as soon as possible. I just hope that the family sees and knows that there are lots of people, even though we can't be there, um, we're there and we're lifting them there and we're caring about them and we're questioning and having them in any way we can. Sebastian is five five with brown hair and brown eyes wide nurses sweatshirt and sweatpants with glasses on now coming up in the next half hour tonight we'll hear from the Sumner County Director of Emergency Management as to what you can do to help out with this search reporting live from Sumner County I'm Caitlin Miller Fox 17 News your code red station um, as I said again there's nothing can you know. Have you seen that one? I think we've just seen that one, didn't we? This one. No, sorry, wrong one. Wrong one. Let's stop this a minute. Get uh, this my flipping mouse. My mouse won't work. Oh, let's go back. We begin with breaking news tonight as the search for a missing Sumner who just occurred three days ago. This one is what we're on. Hey, pack it in. Sure, we're seeing this one. He's upgraded the case from an endangered child alert to an amber alert just yesterday. They did so for a couple of reasons, including the harsh drop in temperatures and the fact that Sebastian needs his medicine. Aaron Cantrell joins us now from Northfield Church in Gallatin, where a vigil is getting underway. Aaron, it's like this young man just vanished. 
Yeah, Carrie and Rory, that's what it feels like, you know, because we are on day three in crews. They have been out all day searching the area, but community members, they felt the need to do something. So they're hosting this prayer vigil coming together. Yeah, you see that one. Um, Carrie, Rory, so once again, there's nothing to be said. I, I don't think this is just a child. I don't think it's got anything to do with his mother and father. Right? This is just a child who has A, been lured away by some chat site. He met someone and that lured him out. Or it's just a lad who's just thought, I'm going for a walk. I need fresh air. And he's gone out for a walk. And, and then lost his way. And as he's and then got tired and he's probably fell asleep somewhere. And then he's got up again and he still can't find his way home. And by now his medication is wearing off. He needs his medication. His routine has been broken. He's getting flustered. Because he can't understand what's happening. So you could literally be walking around in circles. But I would thought if that was the case, they'd have found him. So I don't know. It's hard to say. So anyway, this is only a short one tonight because as I said, there isn't much information on either case. So we're going to leave it there tonight. Just go for an hour. And I will, if anything happens between now and before I go to bed, I will pop back on and I'll do an update then. But this is the only update I've got so far today on both of those two Amber Alerts. Um, so, as I said, if anyone knows anything can help, Please, the way you can help is by sharing this, uh, liking it, because the it, it helps with the analytics, analytics, whatever, of YouTube. It put, YouTube will push this video out more. The more likes it gets, the higher, the more it gets pushed out, which means more people see it, so more people will like it, so it gets pushed out. And that's how it works with YouTube. It really does. Right? And it doesn't cost you anything to like it. Even if you don't like it, just like it so it gets pushed out. Right? So you may not like it, but someone might like it. Okay? I'm not here for me or anyone else. I'm here for the children. And that's what I want this pushed out so people can see this. Okay? So um, please give me a like, please comment, even if you're on Twitter watching this, I, I reply or give a, a heart or emoji back, right? I will reply. I'd like to know your views on this, these two cases. What do you think? I'm pretty sure with Elijah it's a thing to do with the mother and boyfriend right but this case sebastian i don't know it's got nothing to do with the family i think he's either been he's met someone online maybe got to chat with someone on a chat group arranged to meet up with them and gone up for them or it's just decided i need to get some fresh air because his parents said he's more active on the night side so he's probably thought, I just need to get some fresh air, gone for a walk, got lost, fell asleep, woke up the next morning, a bit disorientated, because again, his routine is all out the window. He don't, he don't know where he is. He's walking around. He's not, got, he's not had his medication. So by now, that's going to start working its way out of his system. And... His mind will be doing overload, it's going overload. And they just can't, it's like they can't deal with everything going on around them. 
I know when I go to shops, I have panic attacks, especially certain shops. So I put my headphones on and I listen to my music as I'm walking around the shops. Because sometimes it can stress me out. So that act like a bit like the children, they can't, with my grandson, he's okay going around the shop as long as you say to him, if you say to my grandson, we're going here, A, B, C, and D. Right? And say C was, we go and get some lunch, we go to McDonald's. All he hears is the word Mac. McDonald's or Burger King or Subway, right? So that's where he wants to go straight away, right? And then you take him into shops and he's having meltdowns because he doesn't understand why he can't go. So I found out if I say to him, right, we're going in, we get in the bus, we're going into town, right? We get into town, I say, right, we're just going to go to Say, shop A first. We go in there, it's fine. Come out. Then I say, shop B. We go there. And then we say, right, let's go and get some lunch. Fine. I have no problems with him. But if you give him all this information in one go, his mind can't calculate, can't work on him. Really can't. And he'll have a meltdown. He'll end up having a meltdown. That's why I like, I like his headphones, his noise-reducing headphones, like if they're going into shops. But sometimes the music in shops can be a bit too loud for him, and he, he'll, he'll go too loud, too loud. It hurts. He doesn't even like his sister crying. I mean, she don't get her own way, she starts crying. And he'll go, oh, just give it a moment, anything, to just shut her up. But we can't do that because then we're giving in to her and we're... And she knows it. And we have to explain, we can't do that, Ellis. She has to learn that she can't get everything she wants dry away. But he goes, anything to stop this crying and it hurts. So if he's out there and he's got and he's got sensitivity towards noise, which most autistic children do, and he's hearing helicopters above him, or drones going round past above him, anything like that. If he hears the police sirens going, people calling him in the distance, it will be too much for him. And it can scare them. That's why this makes it a really quite a hard and complicated search, because you have to think, don't go out there with loud speakers. Oh, no. Don't do loudspeakers, then we'll have a total meltdown. Believe me. So they have to look at it in another way. How can they attract his attention without scaring him? So, me, I would say to some people who lives in the area, you got a dog? Yeah. Tell you what, walk around with this group of people with your dog. Because then if you see him, instead of the whole group going up to him, you can make your way over to him. I say you're just walking your dog. You go, hello. Hello, you Sebastian. Do you know what I mean? And if he goes, yeah, then you can see his signal over to come over. Once he's got him in a nice, calm position, because anything can scare him now. I just hope to God we can find him. I hope to God he hasn't gone up with some stranger he's probably been meeting online. Because he's a 15-year-old lad. And that could quite happen. But I'm sure they would have checked all his electronic items off his phone. He hasn't took his phone with him. But I did hear something about a tablet or something. He took a tablet or something with him. So I don't know. I'm going to have to check that up. So I'm going to, I'll check that up later and let you know next time I do an update on him. Anyway, thank you for being here tonight. If you've liked what you see, 
what you heard and if you haven't liked it please give it a like so then it pushes the video out there for others to see it and to get these, these pictures of these two kids a three-year-old and a 15-year-old out there get their faces out there so thank you again so please share please like and leave me a comment to say hi okay and i will see you next time till then oh man oh god why did i put it away down the bottom till then thank you good night